think we can see the beginnings of a post-capitalist system even inside the present system as it exists. For example, in free software, open source software, products like Linux, which are collectively produced, products like Wikipedia. But what we need to do in order to make post-capitalism a reality is to stop thinking about these things as tiny experiments and to start asking governments and cities and parties to understand that there is a whole new economy waiting to be born and that their role is to identify it, to prefer it, to push it forward. So that's where I think post-capitalism come from. It's not um, some grand historic process that happens without human intervention, nor is it a radical plan to rip up capitalism as it exists. It grows spontaneously and slowly from the contradiction between information, which wants to be free, and the market system, which at the moment is just not working. I see the transition to post-capitalism as taking a long time. So it's not like a kind of voluntaristic attack uh, on any one particular structure. But I think that if in the end we have managed to move some of the services and goods we now consume through the market into a sector that could be described as non-market, that is, as a, a collaborative sector where we produce for free and for sharing, then of course everybody who is trying to monetize and commercialize that activity will lose in the sense that, you know, I want us to create cooperatives for local minicab uh, systems cooperatives where the minicab driver gets all the upside and so does the user, not a company that is extracting economic rent from the whole process. So yes, some of these so-called unicorn uh, new companies could not exist because we, will, we would have to regulate the economy in such a way that the minicab driver and the passenger get the money, not some company invented in Silicon Valley whose technology is not unique and not particularly innovative. I think Uber, Airbnb, TaskRabbit, Deliveroo, which we have in Britain, are we're going to see them like Alta Vista and Yahoo and um, Lycos. Do you remember those search engines in the early period of the internet and everybody said this is the business model. Of course these, these companies died. I think these companies which only exist to grab land, defend it and then charge rent, that's effectively all those business models are, must disappear and will be replaced by more collaborative, non-profit, more distributed, you know, more uh, diverse businesses. We should apply competition law to the, those companies and we should, I think, try and replace them with, with real sharing, real collaboration, and sometimes the product will be produced and consumed for free. In my book, Post Capitalism, I say right up front, we have to ditch neoliberalism in order to save globalization. And I wrote that one year before Brexit, and I think it is absolutely confirmed by Brexit. Brexit was done by people who believe they are defending the free market model against Europe. It's an illusion, but the result is gonna be the breakup of a major institution of globalization. I don't want that to happen. I would like to reform that institution, the European Union, radically, but I think, of course, we must resist the national-centred, uh, protectionist um, and xenophobic response to the crisis. But we can't pretend the crisis does not exist. If the problem was only a 50-year cycle, which had hit its end, Stiglitz, Piketty, Krugman, would be right. That their solutions solve the problem if capitalism is only sick for a few months or years. I think this is not a 50-year crisis, it's the beginning of a 500-year transition. What I mean by that, it's like the beginning of the Renaissance or like the beginning of merchant capital that we saw in 
the Netherlands and Britain in the 17th century. It's such a big thing because technology is changing the face of the world. Now, the problem for what we, let's call them the new Keynesians, those who want the state to intervene, is that the state can only tax a market and I think that information technology will shrink the market. It is creating a non-market alongside the market and it means that all the credit in the world, which we need to stabilize and make safe, is ultimately a promise to be repaid from market expansion that may never happen. And if I'm right, then of course, Piketty and Stiglitz and Krugman can solve the problem for 10 years, but they can't solve the ultimate problem that the dynamism of capitalism is dying because information technology is so different. <laughs>